Hi guys, welcome to episode 2 of the Zelda vs. series. For this matchup, we have Zelda 1 vs. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Just a quick reminder, if you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, I'll be having a quick channel update at the end of this episode. The first thing we're going to rank between these two games is the creativity. Zelda 1 has a lot of creativity because it's the first game in the series. But Skyward Sword also has a good amount of creativity due to its motion controls as well as its unique story and art style. And even though Zelda 1 is the first game, it's sort of a pretty basic plot with uh, just like a, a knight saving a princess from a evil demon beast. And that's pretty much all the creativity in Zelda 1. Even, even though it is a great game, I think Skyward Sword uh, manages the victory in this one. Next up is combat. The legend of the original Legend of Zelda doesn't have that much combat other than just the slash and um the shooting the beam when you're at full hearts. However, Skyward Sword on the other hand has a lot of different combat actions because of the motion controls. So it's getting another point in this category. The next category is exploration. Zelda 1 has way more exploration than Skyward Sword, which is one of the most linear Zelda games, where Zelda 1 is the second most open world Zelda game after Breath of the Wild. So it definitely gets a win in this category. Next category we have up is items. This is by far the closest category so far. With Zelda 1 bringing in new items such as the boomerang, bow and arrow, as well as bombs, and even the candle. Where Skyward Sword has a lot of unique items such as the beetle, uh, whip, gust bellows, and lots of other ones. But I think Skyward Sword has a tiny edge due to its more variety of items. Where Zelda 1's items aren't as different from each other. You may think Skyward Sword would have a lot more enemy variety than Zelda 1. Because of their 25 year age gap. But Zelda 1 actually has a lot larger variety of enemies. With a lot of them that have never been in the games before, such as Gibdos, Bokoblins, uh, Zora, as well as a bunch of new bosses, which is why Zelda 1 gets the point in this category. Next category is Dungeons. Skyward Sword has some of the best dungeons out of all Zelda games, with stuff like the Ancient Cistern, the Sand Ship, as well as Skyview Temple. However, Zelda 1 completely invented the dungeon formula. So I'm going to give the point to Zelda 1 because of its creative, inventive dungeons. The next category is characters. Since Zelda 1 is an NES game from 1986, it does not have very much character development or, or good characters. And Skyward Sword is one of, if not the best, ga character game with lots of character development between Zelda, Impa, Link, as well as Groose, which is how Skyward Sword gets the point in this category. Also, characters like Girahim and even the people in Skyloft all have character development that's really good. Where Zelda 1's characters 
are just old dudes in caves that give you stuff. Next up is story. Similarly to characters, Zelda 1 is at a severe disadvantage due to it being an, a game on the NES in a series that hadn't had any games before it. So Skyward Sword gets the easy point on this one due to its great story with great characters as previously mentioned where Zelda 1's story is just not that creative as much as Skyward Swords. The next category we have is emotion. Zelda 1 actually has a lot of emotion due to its actually darker themes than most Zelda games where Hyrule has already been defeated and similarly to Breath of the Wild, Link has to go and stop Ganon. Skyward Sword also has a lot of emotion, but it's not nearly as much as what the NES game gives you in emotion. Even though Skyward Sword definitely has a few more emotional scenes, the overall emotion is better in Zelda 1. Next up is progression. Zelda 1 actually has pretty good progression. From starting out pretty easy for an NES game to getting really difficult at the end, plus the second quest, which makes it even harder. Where Skyward Sword is a little bit more balanced in the middle throughout the whole game. So Zelda 1 gets the point in this category. The next category is side content. Zelda 1 does not have nearly as much side content as Skyward Sword does. Probably due to the NES. While Skyward Sword has a lot of side quests, probably second only to Breath of the Wild. This is why Skyward Sword gets the point in this game. The next category is music. While Skyward Sword has a really amazing track with being the first Zelda game that's fully orchestrated and having great songs such as Ballad of the Goddess, Girahim's theme, Groose's theme, and Fi's Farewell. However, Zelda 1 has the most remembered tracks from the Zelda series, such as the main theme, the dungeon theme, and it also invents the Ocarina of Time theme, which is the flute theme, which is how Zelda 1 gets a point in this category. The next category we have is bosses. The bosses in Zelda 1 are really good, including the Ganon, Manhandla, as well as uh, Goma, and a, a few other good ones. However, Skyward Sword's boss fights are some of the best in the series, including Kalaktos, uh, as well as Demise and Girahim. So, Skyward Sword gets the point in this category. Since Zelda 1 is an NES game, it doesn't really have an art style. While, while Skyward Sword has a really great art style, similarly to Breath of the Wild, it's a mix between Wind Waker and Twilight Princess's art style. And it looks really great, which is how Zelda Skyward Sword gets the point here, and Zelda 1 doesn't.
The next category we have is World. The world in Skyward Sword, although creative, isn't that interesting. While the world in Zelda 1 is open, interesting, and after you beat the game, it redoes it with the same world, but it's remixed so that it's a, a lot more interesting and it makes you feel like you're playing it again. Which is how Zelda 1 gets the point in this category. The next category is difficulty balance. As I previously mentioned, the difficulty isn't very balanced in Skyward Sword, as it sort of seems like medium hard the whole game, and doesn't get too much harder. While Zelda 1 starts out pretty easy, and ends really hard, so the difficulty balance is really good, and the second quest makes it even better. The last category in the tiebreaker is the replay value. For Zelda 1, it's not the easiest game at the end, and it's really hard to beat without a, a guide. And Skyward Sword is a really fun game, and it's fun to play a second time too, as much as almost as much as it is the first time. Which is how Skyward Sword wins this category as well as winning the whole versus match. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video and be sure to leave a like and subscribe as well as put a comment below if you liked this video. So now for my mini update. So I've recently hit 25 subscribers. So now I'm gonna open up my categories and start doing some actual Zelda theories. Thanks for watching Terminal Velocity. I'll see you again next time. Bye.